Joining us now is Ojinika. Oji, okay? With stories trending around the world. <laughs> smiling too much. Hello, Dr. Dr. How are you? <laughs> we you had know, that it, conversation it's yesterday. Into the studio, it's just light up the room. <laughs> With my yellow too, right? <laughs> How are you, Ayo? Hello, Ojinik. You know, I'm 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 Oji. And oh, you can, I can Ojinik. give you, no, no, I can give you Jinik. Sunshine. No, take Jinik. Yeah, Jinik Sunshine. Okay. You bright like, you know, Dr. Kabat says, and then you now want outfits appropriate for it. Well, I know. Absolutely. Well, Thank you for my puppy. I'm going to keep wearing it. Oh, How are you? You're welcome. Very Perfect. well. Thank you. Good morning, Rufai. How are it's you? yellow, yellow. <laughs> you know you like that song. Sparkling yellow. yellow. Well, all right. Sparkling yellow. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Barry Croft Jr., a Delaware trucker, described as an architect of the conspiracy to kidnap Michigan's governor, was sentenced on Wednesday to more than 19 years in prison, the longest prison term yet given to anyone convicted in the plot. Croft was one of the key orchestrators in the 2020 scheme and had planned to blow up a bridge in the hope of inciting a civil war. Prosecutors had sought a life sentence for the 47-year-old who was the fourth and final federal defendant to learn his fate in the most closely watched domestic terrorism case in recent years. In Italy, Pope Francis on Wednesday asked for prayers for his predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, admitting that he is very sick. The Pope made the announcement during his weekly general audience, adding that the ailing 95-year-old former pontiff supports the church in silence. Benedict XVI was Pope from April 19, 2005 until his resignation on February 28, 2013. In Nigeria, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Kali Baba, on Wednesday recommended the suspension of ASP Drambi Bandi, the officer arrested over the killing of Lagos-based lawyer Bolanle Rahim, who was shot dead on Christmas Day. Bolanle was said to have been pregnant with twins at the time of her death. The spokesperson of the Nigerian police force, Olamuiwa Adejobi, in a statement said the suspension is in line with the internal disciplinary measures of the Nigeria police force. Under sports, the hotel room football star Lionel Messi stayed during the Qatar 2022 World Cup is set to be turned into a museum after Argentina's dramatic success at the tournament. The 35-year-old led Argentina to its first World Cup win since 1986 and was named player of the tournament after scoring twice against France. He also picked up the silver boot after netting seven goals in the tournament. Messi's achievements are now set to be immortalized to allow keen fans to see how he spent his time between games in a dramatic campaign. Finally, under entertainment, James Cameron's Avatar, The Way of Water, has made cinema records smashing past the $1 billion mark at the global box office. The epic blockbuster sequel starring Sam Worthington, Zoe Saldana, and Kate Winslet was released on December 16, 13 years after the original Avatar hit the big screen. The sequel now joins the list of the fastest movies to hit the coveted milestone in 2022, which includes Top Gun Maverick and Jurassic World Dominion. According to reports, Avatar The Way of Water earned more than $317 million in the United States alone and a whopping $712 million globally. And I need you to be strong. So let's begin what's trending by paying tribute to Professor George Obiozo, President General of Ahanez and Igbo Worldwide, who died on Wednesday after a brief illness. Professor Obiozo was a renowned academic and served as Nigerian ambassador to the United States, Israel, and Cyprus. He attended the Institute of African Studies in Geneva, Switzerland, 
and the University of South Tacoma in Washington, D.C., where he obtained a bachelor's degree in political science in 1968 before proceeding to Columbia University in New York, where he obtained a master's degree in international law. He served as a lecturer at Pratt Institute, New York City, between 1971 and 1975, and served as an assistant professor of political science at City University of New York. During his time as president of Ohana Zendigo, he consistently called for the emergence of a Nigerian president of Southeast Extraction in 2023. He was 80 years old. It is a privilege for me to introduce the ambassador, His Excellency George Oyozor. Uh, you'll find very quickly he's one that makes you feel comfortable and like a, a close friend. It's been a delight uh, accompanying him and becoming acquainted with him. He lived in the United States for a period of time uh, during the late 60s and early uh, 70s. He received his undergraduate degree from Puget Sound, so he knows the state of Washington. And then he obtained three degrees from Columbia University, a Master's of International Affairs, a Master's of Philosophy, and a Ph.D., in political science. He then returned to his country and he's had the luxury, as he's indicated, of keeping a foot in each camp, one as an academician and one as a politician. He has a very distinguished background. Uh, you will see that he is also a man with many titles. He is ambassador, his excellency, he's professor, and as you see with the cap he's wearing, he's also a chief. So he's an important person in many respects. He's been very prolific in his academic career. He himself has personally written and published uh, seven books, co-authored uh, nine books, and of course many articles and speeches over the years. If you take his CV and print it out, it would go from one end of this room to the other end of the room. In his uh, political career, of course, most recently, it was two, nearly two and a half years ago, he was appointed as the ambassador of the United States for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Prior to that, he was the ambassador to Israel and also as high commissioner to Cyprus. Before that, he served as the secretary general of the Nigerian National Institute of Foreign Affairs, and before that, uh, the advisor to the president on international affairs. And that just takes you back into the 90s. If we went further, you'd be impressed with all the other credentials and ex experience he's had. But it's our pleasure, my pleasure, to introduce the ambassador and to have the ambassador speak to you this time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, may his soul rest in peace, Dr. Bati. That was in 2015 at Brigham Young University in the United States. I mean, you could hear back in 2015 his extensive CV. I mean, you recall the man just said, you know, if you have to go through his CV, you'll go through a room. Um, and I, as I said earlier, you know, he's one of the people that have been calling for, you know, uh, a president of Igbo extraction. And, uh, you know, he's been out there campaigning for this cause. Again, may his soul rest in peace. Well, it, it's very difficult to improve on that uh, profile yes. that has been given by that, uh, you know, uh, person shown in that video, uh, the profile and the tribute. Many who knew uh, Professor George Obiozo will remember him for his talents as a great networker, his uh, humaneness, He's, uh, I mean, if he enter the room, he will light up the place. Yes. And uh, his list of jokes, you know, and witticisms, you know, is endless. He was a very humorous man who, while discussing very serious intellectual issues, would still at the same time bring it down, you know, to the level of the ordinary man. As uh, Emmanuel Lefini pointed out, he was a friend of, uh, you know, yes. the Arise News, uh, you know, establishment. Uh, each time we called on him, he was always very willing to uh, discuss uh, on the channel. Another thing is that, look, he was one of those uh, persons, one of those uh, academics uh, who gave the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs, you know, its very strong foundation. After Fabumi, you had Ojedukun, and then you have that whole generation 
from uh, Bolaji Akinyemi, Gambari, Gabriel Lulu Sonya. Then uh, uh, George Obi as a uh, director general of the NIA. And then the persons that came after, Joy Ogu, uh, Bola Kintenawa professor, and uh, currently uh, Professor Igusa Asage. They built on that foundation to make you know, the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs a very strong uh, policy think tank for the Nigerian government. Of course, as has been pointed out, I was not just uh, distinguished in the field of political science and international affairs, in which he got his PhD. Uh, he, he was also a historian. And all of this you could see in the books that he wrote about Nigeria-U.S. relations, uh, the uneasy friendship between both countries, and also his book on, you know, diplomatic ambivalence, you know, uh, in the world today. You know, very thorough, very prolific, and of course he wrote also for the media, uh, for the newspapers uh, in his younger days. But above all, you know, many will remember him, you know, as a very good man uh, who was not, uh, you know, uh, who made friends across board, even if in his later days he became the uh, president general of the Oanis in Dibo. About two days ago, there were rumors that he had died, uh, but that uh, was denied. Uh, then eventually yesterday, the governor of Imo State, Opu Zodima, issued that statement uh, in which you know, he informed the world that he had uh, passed on. But the excuse that was given was that nobody else wanted to announce until the family had taken a decision that the, uh, you know, world should be informed. His death is a major loss, of course, to the people of uh, Awomama, where he hails from in Imo State, to Imo State, his state, to Nigeria, and to the intellectual academic community, to, you know, where he distinguished himself, and more importantly, uh, to the diplomatic community in Nigeria, where he was one of the, you know, more robust uh, members uh, of that uh, special class. And in many ways, they don't make them like that anymore. Mm. Uh, but I don't want to, this is not an occasion to criticize our foreign policy ex uh, establishment or our diplomats. Again, may his soul rest in peace. We'll take another story. As the rift in the main opposition People's Democratic Party gets wider amid reports that members of the G5 governors, led by the River State Governor, Yesam Wike, have met with the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in London. The People's Democratic Party on Wednesday announced that they are considering expelling the aggrieved governors if they were to go ahead to announce their support for any presidential candidate other than Atiku Abubakar. According to reports, another option being considered by the leadership of the PDP is the dissolution of the party structures in the respective states of the G5 governors, which will in turn affect the political ambition of some members of the group. The governors were said to have traveled to the United Kingdom for a strategic meeting with the APC standard bearer, who is reported to have lobbied for the endorsement of the five governors during the marathon meeting, which was held in London on Tuesday. Ayo. All right, so uh, still yesterday we had quite a robust conversation on the PDP crisis. We talked about the fact that the G5 governors, led by Governor Yeson Wiki of River State, were, were on their way to, had gone to London for a meeting, even elaborated on the choice of London as a destination. But away from that, now an update in terms of um, the response by the PDP, which is in line with what we had talked about. Mm -hmm that if eventually the, PD, the G5 governors go ahead to endorse a candidate of another party, it is tantamount to anti-party activities, which the PDP have now come out to say that all they are waiting for is for them to come out with that stance so that they can begin to, you know, take action. Yeah. And the punitive me measures for that, that they talk about the PDP being a structured organization um, built on co the Constitution and processes and procedures. And this will be followed if the G5 governors do endorse. So, you know, they're going to sanction them. They didn't describe what the sanctions would be. They didn't talk about whether they'd be um, suspended, expelled from the party. They did elaborate that these governors have benefited quite immensely from the PDP structure and that it is, you know, at this critical point 
quite, un quite unfortunate that they've taken this stance. It's still important to know that the G5 governors have not yet come out to categorically say that they'll be going with candidate A, B, or C against their own you know, candidates, even though they have said in many ways that they would not be, since they haven't come to a, you know, an agreement with the, you know, the party leaders, they wouldn't be supporting their party's presidential candidate, who is Waziri Atiku Abubakar. Tinubu is, lo uh, you know, Shwaji Balaba, Tinubu is lobbying. They've had, um, you know, leaning to hospital or be or bus on just candidate. It, uh, they said in January they will let us know who their candidates are. So I, again, this is part of the saga that is the emergence of the G5's anointed candidate. Yeah. Boiling down again to wrap up, you know, my, my, my view is this. At the end of the day, despite or irrespective of who the G5 governors decide to nominate and endorse, the fate of the Nigerian presidency or who will eventually emerge as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria lies in the hands of Nigerians. So please let us not be distracted by this to think that only a few people are responsible for who emerges as president. Please ensure that you are, every single Nigerian, as many as possible, are part of the electoral process. You are the, um, you are, you are the most important yeah. part of governance, very important. Yes, so Rufai, according to this day, you know, the sources that we have, they have threatened the solution. They've also threatened, um, you know, to expel these governors if they go ahead with this anti-party activity, as it may be. Um, you know, we were talking about maybe they might meet with Peter Obi, and now we are hearing Tinubu, but also the G5 have not come out to say that they have met with anyone. As long as, I mean, as far as we know, I've heard that they've gone on holiday. Hmm. Rufai. At first, I mean, I think we've talked at nauseum as regards going to London. Mm -hmm. Our governor should please promote local tourism. There's Yankari Game Reserve. Yes. There's Ubudukatu Ranch. If we hear that governors are going to those places, more tourism money will come there. But like we say in worry, this activity of the G5 governors, it has what I call K-leg and Koboleg. Koboleg is actually Boleg. It's the worry term, uh, local pigeon slang for Boleg. K-leg. <laughs> you know why? <clears throat> In all of this, I know they would have considered the plight of a certain Mr. Shehimakinde, which is in a precarious situation because all the other governors have done two terms. It is only Shehi Makinde that has done one term. And he's going up against a very experienced politician, Teslim Folare, in Oyo. Whatever deal they make with Mr. Tinobu, hope he knows that it's going to be difficult for him. Because Teslim Folare, having had a run at the governorship so many times, being a senator, all right, he's a tested politician in Oyo State. So if they make a deal with can Tinobu give him that assurance? I doubt. Secondly, hope they know that if they don't support their own party candidates, that's why I say get K-Leg and Koboleg, that the party is going to pull out the structure from them. And once they pull out the structure from them, it's going to be destructive. Mm. Because you are only as good as your structure. So people are better tell them this and not deceive them. You saw what happened to Obaseki. He was lucky because he had time. When the APC pulled down the straw, you saw I had to shop for party. If they do that to a certain Mr. Shehi Makinde, in a worst case scenario, a couple of months to the elections, what party does he want to go to? Accord is taking, everybody is taking. I'm sure he's making his deals already because I should think he will have put all of this in perspective. Then if they finally make the deal, will anything they do have bearing on how Nigerians will vote? I doubt. Oji, the elections and the campaigns are far gone. Mm. If the G5 wanted to do anything, they should have done it long ago. Mm. I doubt. You know why? <coughs> Most of the candidates have gone to Kassina. Most of the candidates have campaigned in the heartland. They've come to Lagos, they've campaigned. Nigerians, as we speak, are already making up their mind. Mm. It's not what the G5 will tell them that will change anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a dire straight for them, and that's why they should think about it very well. But, you know, politicians, they might have a better game up their cards without knowing. So we give it to them. They might have a joker. <laughs> but in all of this, this should tell you something, that the APC and PDP will abuse themselves tomorrow. But you can see them going to make deals at the back. 
at your own expense. So Nigerians, please shine your eye. You always say that. Be okay. wise. Shine your so eye. So they are not enemies, though. All right, <laughs> Dr. Bati, really quickly, you ask well, me well, okay, It's not only Shei Makide that is vulnerable. Shei Makide is seeking a, a second term. The only person not seeking any elective position out of the G5 governors is Governor Yesom Wiki. The others want they to go to, to the Senate. So they too may be vulnerable. Now, PDP spokespersons from Timothy Osado Lloyd, the Olafeso, and others have said Section 58, Subsection 1 of the PDP Constitution says you cannot expose the party to ridicule. But can the PDP afford to expel them or suspend them? before the election, because they are followers. Those followers may not really be aligning with them. Yeah. So that's also another problem there. The third problem is that they should remember what happened in the 2007 election, when governors of the AD, with the exception of Bola Chinubu at the time, supported uh, Olush, President Olusha Gombas and just bid for a second time. The wrong messaging worked against them. So how do you tell the electorate uh, don't vote Atiku Abubakar, but in other elections, vote for this particular political party. It could be problematic, as history has shown us. Well, thank you very much, Ujineka. Thank you all again thank for you. your great analysis on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.